time I'm doing my top 10 favorite Christmas movies. These are the movies I watch every year around this time to get me in that festive holiday spirit. So at number 10 I have Single Santa Seeks Mrs. Claus. This is a Lifetime movie where Santa's heir Nick needs to find a wife. He goes to California and he has a list of like potential women but doesn't hit it off with any of them. And instead he hits it off with Beth who doesn't believe in Santa Claus. So Nick needs to convince Beth and her son that he's really Santa and he's not crazy and that he's a good guy and Beth shouldn't marry him. At number 9 I have Snow. This is an ABC Family movie. In this movie one of Santa's reindeers goes missing. Buddy has escaped and he gets caught and ends up in a zoo. So Santa needs to free Buddy before Christmas Eve so he can deliver the presents. Buddy doesn't know how to fly yet though because he's baby reindeer. And so Santa can't get him out right away and he comes up with all these crazy plans to get Buddy out of the zoo. He tries to befriend one of the zookeepers, Sandy, in the process. He ends up developing this huge and massive crush on Sandy. Also in here we have Buck who is this sleazy guy who first of all is trying to woo Sandy in the least charming ways possible. Ew. And second of all, Buck is trying to find big game for one of his clients to hunt. Like this really rich guy wants to hunt flying reindeer on Christmas. Isn't that fantastic? So Santa and Sandy need to keep Buddy away from Buck also. So all kinds of crazy shenanigans. At number eight I have White Christmas. This has an Irving Berlin soundtrack to it. It is a uh, it is a it is a classic musical, like huge production numbers. So the plot of this is that there are two guys who after World War II decide to go into show business. They start producing these really fantastical shows, and one of their army buddies has two sisters who are trying to break into showbiz. So they go to give the girls advice on like they should do better with their acting stuff. And they become smitten with the girls and follow them to Vermont, where they are performing at an inn. And the inn belongs to their former general that they served under during World War II, but there's no snow this Christmas, and the inn isn't doing very well, and the general feels underappreciated. The guys try to cheer the general up by bringing their show to Vermont and trying to get all their old army buddies to come watch the performance and, you know, let the general know that he is loved. So, so touching. At number seven, I have The Preacher's Wife. In this movie, we have a preacher and his wife, hence the title, and they are in charge of this one church that is not doing well. It is literally falling apart, the boiler doesn't work, the congregation is dwindling, and there is a development company that wants to buy the church out so they can build a shopping mall. And at the same time, this husband and wife are going through problems with their marriage, and that's starting to fall apart. So they pray for help and they get Dudley, an angel, who comes and helps them. And Dudley really does try to help, but in the process he also falls in love with the wife, which causes some shenanigans. And it is a really charming and touching movie, and it has great music. At number six, I have Nativity, which is a BBC movie, and it focuses on Mr. Madden's and his class. And Mr. Madden's does not like Christmas. He, his girlfriend broke up with him last year around Christmas. And he used to be really good friends with this one teacher, Mr. Shakespeare, who now teaches at a posh school. And every year, Mr. Shakespeare's class does this amazing nativity scene, and it gets reviewed by the local paper, and it's kind of a minor celebrity in the area. And so Mr. Madden's feels completely and totally inadequate, and he is not happy when he gets told to put on the school's nativity play that year. And he and Mr. Shakespeare meet, and they start talking up their nativity plays, like, mine's going to be better than yours, no, mine's going to be better than yours. And Mr. Madden's tells a white lie, saying that Hollywood is going to come and watch their nativity play. And first Mr. Shakespeare's like, yeah, right, whatever, in your dreams. But Mr. Madden's is also there with his uh, teaching assistant, Mr. Poppy. And Mr. Poppy finds out that they're going to have Hollywood come. He gets super excited and tells all the kids in the entire school and the whole community goes crazy. And Mr. Madden's is like, Crap, Hollywood's not coming, guys. Um, but I can't tell you that because you're all way excited. So the whole movie, he's trying to get his ex-girlfriend, who now lives in Hollywood, to come watch the play because then Hollywood came and he's not lying. And it is really charming and adorable. And the kids get super excited because nobody ever believes in them. And all of a sudden, Hollywood is coming. At number five, I have Elf, which is a Will Ferrell movie. 
In this, he plays Buddy the Elf, who thinks he's one of Santa's elves, but he's actually human. And he finds this out when he's like an adult. And Buddy goes to New York to find his real dad and tries to develop a relationship with his dad because he wants to know what it's like to be human. But his dad is on the naughty list and doesn't believe in Santa Claus. So he doesn't take kindly to what he thinks is a crazy guy showing up at his door. At number four, I have Love Actually, which follows several different plot lines, but they all have to do with love and relationships and family and friends and what what we actually care about at the holidays and what we mean to each other. And it's just super sweet. I love all the different storylines that are going on and how they're all interconnected and they know each other. And it's just a lot of fun. At number three, I have Miracle on 34th Street. It's a classic movie. It's about Kris Kringle going to New York and he gets there on Thanksgiving and is watching the Macy's Parade and the big finale of that parade is Santa Claus coming down the street. But Santa is really, really drunk. So Kris Kringle is like, no, not acceptable. And he goes and talks to the parade organizer, Mrs. Walker. She's like, oh no, we can't have this dude on camera in front of millions of people. You're right, but I need a Santa. So she convinces Chris to do it. And Chris eventually becomes the store Santa for the 34th Street store, like the really big one. Also going on in this movie, we have Mrs. Walker and her daughter Susan do not believe in Santa. So Chris is trying to convince them that he is Santa and there really is a Santa. And it's a really good movie about faith and believing and Santa Claus. At number two, I have the Santa Claus starring Tim Allen. He plays Scott Calvin, who is an adult and doesn't believe in Santa Claus. He works in like advertising and totally doesn't get the Christmas spirit. But he has a little son that he tells, you know, Santa Claus is real too because he's a little kid. But on Christmas Eve, <laughs> on Christmas Eve, Scott hears a noise on his roof and goes to like see what this is and it's Santa Claus and Santa falls off the roof and dies and the son's like oh my goodness there's no you just killed Santa Claus all these kids aren't gonna get their presents now so Scott puts on the suit they deliver all the presents they go to the North Pole at the end of the night and he's told well you're the next Santa Claus now because you killed the previous one so I was like uh no not okay with that but then he like falls asleep and when he wakes up in the morning, he thinks it's all like a crazy dream, nightmare thing. It's like, whatever. But the kid remembers it all and is like, Dad, remember how you're Santa Claus? Guys, my dad is Santa Claus. Totally Santa Claus. And he becomes completely obsessed with Santa Claus. And it's not, not really great. Everybody thinks the kid's crazy. The dad thinks the kid's crazy. Until around Christmas the next year, when he's, the dad starts gaining a ton of weight. And he gets the naughty and nice list, and he has to come to terms with the fact that he's Santa Claus now, and people are relying on him. And it's just a really funny movie, and it's really well done, and I totally adore this movie, guys. Totally. So at number one, my favorite Christmas movie is The Muppets Christmas Carol. It is a really good adaptation of a Christmas story. Like, it hits it spot on, like, what's going on in the book. We have Gonzo narrating and being Charles Dickens and giving like historical background type stuff. And it's totally cute. Michael Caine plays Scrooge, who is the miser who doesn't believe in Christmas and hates it and gets visited by three ghosts who show him the true meaning of Christmas and why he shouldn't be a jerk. The movie also has Kermit the Frog playing Bob Cratchit with Miss Piggy playing his wife and Tiny Tim playing their son. And it is totally awesome. I love the way that the Muppets and their humor works in here and all the fantastic musical scores. They are my top 10 favorite Christmas movies. Let me know what your favorites are. I love you guys. Peace out. Keep reading. Keep watching movies. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And I will catch you next time. Bye!